Hi all. Last week we talked about the three factor model. This week we're talking about the five factor model. After Fama and French published their three factor model, other studies, including Novi Marx and Tittman, Wei and Shea, have found that it was an incomplete model. Fama and French aim to improve their model by adding two new factors, which were first, profitability, and second, investment. So, what was the research question? The dividend discount model states that the market value of a share of stock is the discounted value of expected dividends per share. A manipulation of the model's mathematical representation yields this following equation, which implies that higher expected return, higher expected earnings is related to higher expected returns, and that higher investment growth in book equity is related to lower expected returns. Previous literature also has discovered relations between expected returns and the profitability and investment factors. As such, the research question was whether an expansion of the Fama French three-factor model to include two new factors, namely profitability investment, could increase the robustness and predictive power of the model. So higher investment is related to lower expected returns because if you have to invest more into, for example, factories and machines, less of your cash is available to go to investors. Higher profitability means a higher level of cash flows that could potentially go to investors. <laughs> of course, higher profitability doesn't mean much if a company can't sustain it. So the persistence of the profitability is also important. A paper called Sloan 1996 shows that higher levels of cash flows are typically more consistent. So overall, higher profitability so long as it's made up of mostly higher cash flows, is related to higher expected returns. <clears throat> okay, table one, average monthly percent uh, excess returns for portfolios firmed on size and book to market, size and operating profitability, size and investment. At the end of each June, stocks were allocated to five size groups based on the NYSE market cap breakpoints. Then stocks in each of the five size portfolios were put into five sub portfolios based on book to market ratio, operating profitability, or investment using NYSE breakpoints. Book to market was calculated with the book equity at the end of the fiscal year in year T minus one, and the market cap at the end of December of year T minus one, adjusted for changes in shares outstanding. Operating profitability was calculated as revenue minus COGS, which is cost of goods sold, minus SGNA, which is selling general administrative expenses, minus interest expense, all divided by book equity. Investment was measured as the change in total assets from the fiscal year ending in T minus two to the fiscal year ending in T minus one, divided by total assets in T minus two. <coughs> the return data <coughs> presented in the table were calculated as the average of monthly returns in excess of the one month treasury bill rate. In panel A, the growth firms are on the left and the value firms are on the right. Growth firms have lower book to market ratios than value firms by construction. The size matters somewhat, but what appears to drive returns the most is book to market. Returns for value firms are consistently higher than re returns for growth firms across different size portfolios. Panel B shows that firms with higher profitability typically have higher returns. Panel C shows that firms with conservative investment versus aggressive investment, the conservative firms seem to have the higher returns. In general, we would put the weight on, con in general, um, the takeaway from this is conservative investment, small uh, value and high profitability appear to be associated with higher returns. Any investors, any investor could access these factors through mutual funds and ETFs that are no load or low load, meaning there are either no fees or low fees. Note that the role of a hedge fund is to provide an investment vehicle that isn't correlated with the common risk factors and thus provides opportunity for greater risk management. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Um, sorry, we're going to talk about uh, averages of monthly percent excess return for value weight portfolios formed on size, book to market, operating profitability, and on size, book to market and investment, and on size, operating profitability and investment. At the end of each June, stocks were allocated to two groups based on size using NYSE median market cap. Then stocks in each of the two size groups were allocated into four book to market groups, four operating profitability groups and four investment groups. Panel A shows that small value firms with high operating 
profitability performed the best, yielding more than 20% annual returns. Panel B shows that small value firms with low investment performed well. Panel C shows that small firms with high operating profitability and low investment performed well. Note that the period for the samples is from 1963 to 2013. So these trends may or may not persist during the most more recent years. Now let's talk about the construction of size, book to market, profitability, and investment factors. Fama French used independent sorts to assign stocks to two size groups and two or three book to market operating profitability investment groups. The value weight portfolio is defined by the intersections of the groups or the building blocks for the factors. We label these portfolios with two or four letters. The first always describes the size group, small or big. In the two by three sorts and two by two sorts, the second describes book to market group, high, neutral, low. The operating profitability group, robust, neutral, weak, or the investment group, conservative, neutral, aggressive. In the two by two by two by two sorts, the second character is book to market, the third is operating profitability, and the fourth is investment. The factors are small minus big, high minus low in terms of book to market, robust minus weak in terms of operating profitability, and then conservative minus aggressive in terms of investment. We would expect the factors to be positive, but that doesn't always happen. For example, big stocks could outperform small stocks if they control large market shares and can use their size to maneuver in the market. Okay, table four, summary statistics. For monthly factor percent returns, panel A shows that average small minus big returns are around 30 basis points per month for the three methods of sorting factors. Panel B shows that different versions of small minus big were highly correlated. The similarity between the three sorts of small minus big can be attributed to the fact that the size breakpoint for small minus big was always the NYSE median market cap. In terms of high minus low, robust minus weak and conservative minus aggressive, the two by two sorts use the NYSE median breakpoints to break stocks into two groups and form the factors. <clears throat> the two by three sorts did not consider the stocks in the middle 40% of the book to market. Operating profitability and investment. The two by two by two by two sorting method uses more constrained subsets and fewer stocks to construct the factors. As a result of considering a more extreme selection of stocks, which were top third versus bottom third, the two by three sorts had higher returns than the two by two sorts. The difference between two by three sorts and two by two returns was smaller for big companies as the returns of bigger companies vary less than the returns of smaller companies. Table five, summary stats for three, four, and five factor models. GRS statistic measures the statistical significance of the intercepts. The hypothesis for the GRE test is that all the intercepts are zero, but table five shows that the intercepts are all statistically significant, implying that the three, four, and five factor models all left a proportion of the returns unexplained. The absolute value of the intercept is about the same for two by three factors and the two by two factors, and it's a little bit lower for the two by two by two by two factors. And then the two metrics that estimate the proportion of the cross section of expected returns left unexplained show that the five factor model outperformed the three and four factor models. Table six, using four factors in regression to explain average returns on the fifth. This table shows regression of each of the five factors on the other four. In the regressions for the market size, operating profitability, and investment factors, the intercepts are significantly away from zero. However, the book to market intercepts are very close to zero, suggesting that book to market is a redundant factor for describing average returns. In alternative factor, HMLO or orthogonal high minus low could be used to replace the previous high minus low factor. Orthogonal high minus low is defined as the sum of the intercept and residual from the regression HML on the other four factors. So now we're going to discuss table seven. Uh, regressions for the 25 valuated size book of market portfolios. This table compares the original Fama French three factor model and the new five factor model with orthogonal high minus low instead of the original high minus low factor. The intercepts of the new five factor model were closer to zero than the intercepts of the three factor model, showing that the five factor model outperformed the three factor model. Okay, now we're going to talk about table eight. 
So the, t the time series averages of book to market operating profitability and investment for portfolios formed on size and book to market on size and operating profitability on size and investment and on size operating profitability and investment. The factors, the factor slopes often line up with profitability, investment and book to market characteristics, but this is not always the case. There's no reason to expect that the univariate characteristics would perfectly line up with the multivariate regression slopes. Okay, in table nine, we have a regression for 25 value weight size operating profitability for portfolios. The intercepts in panel A are robust, which shows that the original three-factor model had a lot of um, difficulty with the size operating profitability portfolios, especially portfolios with very low or very high operating profitabilities. The five-factor model compared better. In table 10, we have regressions for 25 value weight size investment portfolios. Similar to table seven and nine, the five factor model produces intercepts that were closer to zero than th the three factor model intercepts. The three factor model particularly had a lot of trouble with portfolios of small size and high investment stocks. And now looking at table 11, this is regressions for 32 value weight size operating profitability investment portfolios. Stocks were divided into two size groups and then further divided into portfolios based on profitability and investment. The five-factor model intercepts are closer to zero than the three-factor model intercepts. Notably, the five-factor model had trouble with small stocks with low profitability and high investment, but this issue is not evident for big stocks with low profitability and high investment. The three-factor model intercepts were further away from zero in portfolios of extreme profitability and investment characteristics, suggesting that strong profitability and investment results pose issues for the original three-factor model. So that concludes this introduction to the three, or to the Fama French five-factor model. Um, if you're interested in learning more and understanding this at a deeper level, I strongly recommend you try doing the five-factor uh, replication, which is where we replicate this, the Fama French five-factors from scratch using Python. And you can uh, find that video on our channel. Thank you so much and have a great day.